to Jank Brews. It's been a couple of weeks. I went to Latin America to do some exploring. Today we're going to be talking about a really janky brew called Four Color Calamity. Based on the namesake card, Invoke Calamity. It's an instant for four red and a colorless. You may cast up to two instant and or sorcery spells with a total mana value of six or less from your graveyard and or hand without paying their mana costs if those spells we put into your graveyard exiled and instead in exile Invoke Calamity. So we're not going to go too deep on the depth tech here, uh, just looking at the combinations of cards and why we're playing them. Uh, we'll start with Zergo and Ojutai, because there's only one creature in this deck. In fact, there's only one card that is not an instant or sorcery, and it's Zergo and Ojutai. Uh, and it's basically because this deck uh, used to be Grixis in standards past. Uh, I loved playing this deck when Invoke Despair was in standard. Uh, it was clearly the path to victory. You no longer have, uh, and it's hard to win without something like Invoke Calamity. I'm sorry, without Invoke Despair. So here we are playing Zergo and Ojatai as a one of creature. Pretty resilient uh, to most removal. Bad against, uh, you know, Shouldred's Edict or Verdict, whatever the, you know, make you sacrifice uh, at instant speed. But other than that, Zergo and Ojatai is pretty tough to deal with. So we're playing that as a one of creature. Um, and what we want to do with Invoke Despair is have stuff in our graveyard that either kills our opponent or kills our opponent's board. Uh, and in combination that adds up to six CMC. So in this version, we're only playing three uh, other five mana spells and they're all burned down the house. So we wanna be burning down the house plus any number of these one mana spells, play with fire to rest, cut down, consider. Whatever we happen to need at the time, we wanna dump things into our graveyard uh, and then recast them with Invoke Calamity. Um, at the four spot, we've got big score because as you can imagine, our mana is bad here. We're playing four colors without green. So being able to get treasure tokens is pretty helpful. Uh, and we'll see in a minute how you can potentially get a lot of treasure tokens. We're playing a single copy of the end and we can cast the end from our hand. Then we can recast the end off of Invoke Calamity. This is good for things like uh, Traxa or Shieldreds, anything that really like messes up our game plan. Um, at the three spot, we're playing two copies of Confounding Riddle. Uh, this is a card that if we weren't on four colors, I think would have more copies. It's a viable counter spell. Um, even late in the game, um, you know, Having to pay four is pretty tough to get around in most cases. Uh, it also serves our purpose of dumping cards into the graveyard for Invoke Calamity. So if we don't have to counter anything or playing Control Mirrors or something of that nature, we can uh, end of turn Confounding Riddle to look for a land, for example, or look for our Invoke Calamity or look for our Zergo and Ojitai and dump everything else into the bin. We got a single copy of Brotherhood's End, along with Burn Down the House, helps us keep the board clean. We've got four full copies of Maestro's Charm. This was the card that made the original deck work. Um, it's great as a removal spell. It's great to push through damage. It is great at doing uh, what Invoke Calamity wants to do, which is fill up the yard and or find Invoke Calamity. So between Confounding Riddle and Maestro's Charm, typically the two cards that we don't want to have to dump into our graveyard are Invoke Calamity and Zergo and Ojitai. Zergo and Ojitai, you can't get back in this version of the deck, so you'd never want to dump it unless you absolutely have to. Uh, Invoke Calamity can hit another Invoke Calamity, um, which is every great once in a while relevant if you've got, say, like multiple one-drop uh, spells in your graveyard. You could invoke Calamity to uh, replay and invoke Calamity from the graveyard, play one of those one-mana spells, and then with a second invoke Calamity play, burn down the house and another one of those one-mana spells, or you know, a, a four and a two or a three and a three combo or something like that. So uh, beyond three, we've got quite a bit at two. Um, we're, we're going reasonably heavy into Lightning Helix. I think this should be a four of and a Jeskai version, which I have been working on, uh, but really just love Maestro's Charm and some of the block removal spells like the end is pretty cool. Um, so we got three copies of Lightning Helix. We got two copies of Galvanic Iteration. This was the card that really just pushed Invoke Despair over the top. If you can double up of Invoke Despair and and potentially, you know, cast some one mana spells off of Invoke Calamity at the same time, absolutely bonkers. Uh, but sometimes, you know, making multiple copies of Invoke Calamity, even with this shell, is fine. Making multiple copies of Burn Down the House is sometimes really nice. So we got a pair of these. These can also be dumped and played for flashback. Go for the Throat, Negate, Sunset Revelry, and Destroy Evil. Um, all somewhat self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into the mana. We're actually playing 61 cards in this deck. Uh, if there was a type of deck where 61 is right, I think that this is kind of it uh, because you're not trying to do any particular one thing. You're you're trying to have a bunch of potential combinations and the man is bad. Uh, I want to say we're on 27 lands out of 61. I'm sorry, we're on 28 lands out of the 61. Uh, we're only playing a single mountain. The rest are duels. Uh, I'm not going to go into that 
If you want to dig on the mana, you're welcome to. Could be wrong, but anyway, this is a pretty fun and janky deck. We're going to get into some action. And I, the season just reset. I came back from Latin America. Uh, I played a little bit over there, but it was mostly um, unranked because my internet was bad. Uh, but I think we're playing at like the bottom of Platinum, basically. Uh, the season reset a couple of days ago and went from like the bottom of Mythic to the bottom of Platinum, I think. All right, we got some colors of mana. Uh, we got two reds. Really want to play as many reds as possible, so this is fine. Reminder, if you like janky decks, deck techs, and or gameplay, like and subscribe. Uh, Jank Brews on YouTube, Jank Brews on uh, Twitch. Boom and block from our opponent, Farah MTG. We've got an otherworldly gaze. I feel like that means we're probably against Bug Reanimator deck, which I don't think we're especially good against. I think because they have many targets uh, for their reanimation, it's not just, say, something like a Traxa that we can hopefully find our one copy of the end and use. Hmm, okay, maybe we're we're not seeing that. I have no idea what we're playing against. I like this card. This is pretty janky. Alright. We're just gonna stick with our plan. Um I am inclined to just dump confounding riddle, even though it's what we want to be doing. And we don't know what our opponent's up to. We do have a negate in hand already. And cards in our graveyard uh, are just as good as cards in our hand for the most part in this deck. So in this case, I'm going to play a on a ridge. Well, no, I forgot. I dumped that. So we're, we're going to play Xander's Lounge. <clears throat> Holding up a gate. I don't see bug colors left yet. Um, I'm inclined to... This is just annoying. Uh, not really knowing what else they're up to. I'm gonna negate, negate Jace. Um, partially because we have a play this turn that we'd like to stick with. And... It looks like against this deck I'd want to dump Sunset Revelry. I, I was thinking about big scoring, but since I've just seen these two colors and it's likely they have um, counter magic, I don't really want to run into that. So as long as we still have lands, I'm going to keep playing them and not worry about big scoring. They flash anything or they use their mana. Um, they need to use more than that, unfortunately. We'll see more of what they have here. Hopefully they're on some sort of just like virtue of persistence plan, um, because literally other than Ojitai, uh, there's nothing for them to get to so Ojitai. Although, Cruelty of Gix is, well, fortunately they can't cast them on our turn, and usually we'll be in Rona. Um, we may try to uh, bait out a spell here. They don't do anything. I think I'm gonna Helix, Rona. Okay. There's not even a pause for them to cast a thing. Um, and we do now have enough mana to big score. We could technically double big score. Um, I think I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do it on their turn. Double mana consideration, yeah, we have the right mana. Uh, this is going to give us, if it, if it, if they have something for it, they're going to have to burn it on their turn. And if they don't, we're going to get quite a few cards. Sunset Revelry feels kind of inconsequential. So does Destroy Evil, but I think I'm going to, uh, go ahead and dump Sunset Revelry. 
It's just if they happen to be in on these uh, cruelty of gigs, virtue of persistence, it'd be nice to have double uh, destroy equal available to us. We got a lot of lands here. Um, not exactly where we want to be. But our whole deck is pretty active to us right now. There's a burn down the house. We're going to play a Restless Reef. I don't really know what our opponent's up to. I'm somewhat tempted to Galvanic Iteration into burn down the house. Uh, and see what happens. Let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. We still have a, a pair of mana up. Uh, yeah, we're going to try this. I'm just, I'm curious. It's, it is potentially a lot for them to deal with. It is a three turn clock if they do nothing. I haven't seen any uh, counter magic from them yet. If they want to waste, you know, individual removal spells on these guys, more power to them. Even if it's, you know, uh, virtue of persistence, okay with that. Well, that's kind of cool. Reenact the crime. I love that card. I saw my buddies about it. And how interesting I thought it was. So this is kind of cool for them. Um, they'll take some damage, but they'll be able to essentially remove our board. Presumably they get rid of ours, yeah. Kind of makes me wish I had the negate or the um, confounding griddle back. Uh, I'm gonna need to draw our namesake card here. <clears throat> they fire up. Oh, they have. Okay, yeah, they've got Restless Reef, so they could fire that up. Uh, I mean, I'd be pretty much happy with that. We have our own punch back with Restless Reef. They'd have to use up all their mana to do it, and we'd have plenty of extra. Cruelty of Gix. Our creature from the graveyard. Okay, they're gonna discard nothing. Let's see what we have. Um, it's kind of cool. This is what we want to destroy evil for. Um, I don't really want them searching for a card. Unless... Okay, maybe now I want them searching for a card. Because when they go to three, it's kind of hard to come back from, unless they have like an exile card. Maybe they do. Uh, I'm a little bit willing to risk that. I don't know if we quite have enough mana for Burn Down the House and Restless Reef from four. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be... I think, I think we do. It's going to be interesting. Um, so if we go here, we fire up Restless Reef, yeah, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, yeah, we're gonna do it. That way, they can... They might have to do this. Yeah, I... Oh no, that's terrible. Wasn't paying attention to the auto-tapper. They would just be dead. <laughs> oh no. Oh, we should pay attention to the auto tapper. Why it would auto tap a freaking uh, man land that I already activated as opposed to using this treasure, I don't know. But I can kind of see it. They're going to need to find some way to gain life or exile my board. Reenact the crime. What do, what do we have here? We've got. Oh wow, this is probably really interesting. This is a game in which the deck should have won, and the pilot has was... Okay, so as long as hit Zergo and Ojitai, they won't get anything from our graveyard. I don't think Jace necessarily does them a whole lot of good, unless there's some sort of loop they can play here. 
Okay, yeah, I guess they could probably continue looping. Um, as long as they have cards in hand that are good. They might have something cool to do. I like this deck. This is saucy. Ollie. Yeah. Um, Brona isn't bad for us, per se. Confounding Riddle could be bad for us, because they can dig for something good. Um, get like an Atraxa or something. Um, just any way to gain life for them really right now is probably fine. Reach. Might be on loop. I've played against a version of this with um, our, our Bant Slogurk deck, where they essentially like breached both of our decks out. <clears throat> uh, looks like they've breached their deck, but we still have 20 cards left. Um, but if they can just breach us out, we're dead. So when they breached us out, we're at, let's see, we'd be at. I will keep watch. Five cards left if they have nothing else. If they have another Jace, no. we just died. No. Uh, which case will be really sad because the deck should have won. Um, if we had not avoided, or if we had not missed the auto tapper hosing us, we would have won off of the cruelty of Gex Trigger to put him at three. Well, redeemed. We should have won that one anyway. Glad that we did. Since this is a jank bruise, we're gonna we're gonna get another brew, Yingling Black and Tan before we go into game two. BRB. If, if ever jank bruise is accused of roping, it's one of two things. Thinking for a long time because we're old and slow, or we went to get a beer. Yeah, we got lands and spells, a pair of Invoke Calamities, maybe not what we want in our opening hand, but we do have a means by which to, if we survive long enough, consider burn down the house. Then play them again with Invoke Calamity. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to have that much time, <clears throat> given what our opponent's thrown at us here, but... Unfortunately, right now, we don't even have white mana. So, if we drew a lightning helix, which would be a great draw, otherwise, we can't cast it. So, we can find. Uh, Maestro's Charm. Oof, Maestro's Charm is curious because it is a removal spell that we can cast. I love having it in the yard, but I don't think we have anything else to do next turn, so we're going to draw this card now. <clears throat> can also gain us a little life. Uh, confounding Riddle. Um, yeah. Well, we do have some options. And with one more land of any color, we can and cast Invoke Calamity. And while we don't love doing it, sometimes it's necessary to cast cards from our hand rather than our graveyard. We're on the draw in this game. I feel like we'd have already lost. The Brotherhood's End or something of that nature. Come on out. We could counterspell this. I'm going to let 
we go. I'm not sure if that's the right play. So they clearly have something they could cast. I'd love to try to bait out like a monstrous, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and cast this five damage here. Jason MPG is thinking long and hard about what to do. They've got uh, Monstrous Rage. I think it just gets slammed on Etching of Mono. <clears throat> if what they have was a Lightning Strike or something, it doesn't really matter what they do. Okay, Rafine's Tower means that we do have Burn Down the House, turn 5. And it also means that we can counter literally anything they cast here. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they're not going to have the Kamano in play, like the 2-2 the version of it. And it also means that our Burn Down the House, like, Burn Down the House is pretty weak under these circumstances. Uh, the reason is because Etching of Kamano exiles car creatures that would die, uh, we don't get much value out of our 1-1s. One we literally can't even uh, defend against two etching of Kamanos. Uh, I th think I'm going to take this. I might regret if they just like cast nothing, but the chances of red casting nothing with three mana is low. Yet, here we are. Right now this burn down the house feels bad. Uh, in which case, I'm kind of inclined to confounding riddle digging for something because I can put put stuff in my yard too. Like I, if I could just put some uh, you know, lightning helix or okay, so there's a lightning helix that could go to the yard. It could also just go to my hand. Uh, <clears throat> I could cast it from either place. Just don't have anything else to do. So if it's in my yard, I can invoke Calamity, cast it, casts uh, Maestro's Charm, mm, and then have an extra land. Uh, the Restless Loop Reef isn't the worst card to have. I can't put it in play right now, which is, it's like two turns away. Feels kind of bad. Um, because I can cast it either way, I'm going to put this in my hand. There's a Bivouac. Um, invoke Calamity can't allow me to burn down the house at instant speed. And even though I hate taking cards out of my hand, I think that might be the better play here. I could burn the house down and consider, like, drawing an extra card. If we don't just die to, like, lightning strikes and stuff. The fact that they did nothing is pretty, pretty sketch. So there's a play with fire. I'm gonna let that go because they can't kill me with one spell of five. I guess what I hope they do is play like a the, the hasty legendary guy or something like that. Two burn spells probably kills us regardless. But if they play like a hasty guy, it'll be interesting to burn the house down at instant speed. Uh, okay, they didn't. They didn't do that. Yeah, so we're gonna do. I'm not even sure what we're gonna do yet. <laughs> uh, we're gonna cast invoke calamity. That for sure we're doing, and hope we don't die to like lightning strike. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to look at my yard first. So we've got Consider, Maestro's Charm, Confounding Riddle. We could go to 8 off of Maestro's Charm. Uh, 
but then we're straight back down to four with those dudes if nothing else happens. Um, so I think the play here is consider burn down the house. Instant speed burn down the house. Only you need to cast it once. It's pretty rough when I've only got two left. Hopefully if they could just kill us with burn spells, they would have done it already instead of slow rolling us. Okay, they're just slow rolling us, perhaps. Uh, play with fire is fine here, I think. Yeah, I don't hate it. So this, we're just dead, okay. Uh, oof. What to even do here from two? We're gonna play a bivouac. We we could just die to just a, we could die to just about anything. Presumably they don't have anything in hand to kill us right now. So part of me wants to helix, holding up play with fire and or cycling. Xander's lounge. There's like a couple of cards that red plays. Godric being one of them. That would be annoying here. Even if they had it, we wouldn't be dead right now. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna hold the play with fire in case they play uh, Squee or any of these little hasty dudes. But we potentially put ourselves out of burn damage range. If they didn't have it a minute ago, they don't have it now when we're at five. And I'm wondering what they could even be playing, what they could have other than maybe like monster Rages or something like that. That would. Okay, there's a face down card with Ward 2. Uh, I think that's the guy when it flips up, it deals damage equal to it's I don't know, but we're gonna we're gonna kill that shit. Or we're gonna attempt to. Alright, we, we got it and it was a yeah, fugitive coat breaker. Oh, okay, that's not what I thought it was, but oddly now I kinda wish I um uh, see what can't do both. Um, but I think drawing a card, gaining four life, is like fine with me here. I wish it wasn't a mountain, but what can you do? We could fire up Restless Vents. There's a 2 3. I don't think they can do anything about that. I might want to defend with it though. We're at nine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Um, I think I'm okay with discarding a mountain. Cut down. I don't hate cut down. Really wish I've been able to cast. Um. Yeah, they put something on top. We got another evoke calamity though. Um. Well, they put something on top, so we're just gonna chill and find out what it is. We're not in any hurry here. Face down card. I'm assuming maybe it's the same face down card. Instant sorcery in their graveyard. They've got one, two, three, four. So they can't quite do it. Uh, do I want to dig a little? Is the question. <clears throat> I could. I could technically do both. Um, I could cut down this guy. Well, he's got board two. Mm, one, two, three, four, five. So I could Confounding Riddle. I'm a little bit regretting that I didn't just Confounding Riddle that dude. Hmm. So we're gonna Lightning Helix this guy. Yep. I am certain. And then we're gonna Maestro's Charm. Uh, look at the top five. Ugh, that's not so great. We'll, we'll grab a Lightning Helix though. We do eventually have to figure out how to kill this dude. <laughs> Arguably, I should have 
used uh, Confounding Riddle, but I want to be able to potentially counterspell something if I need to. So let's see, one, two, three, four, so we have Lightning Helix up. Uh, I think I'm going to Bivouac. I don't want to dump any of these cards. Maybe I want to dump Cut Down, actually. Then we'd still be able to hold up Lightning Helix. Certainly want to be able to cast Lightning Helix twice. Galvanic Iteration, super good here. Bivouac puts him on a faster clock, but we want to just keep doing what we want to be doing here. Um, still going to chill. So there's a Maestro's Charm. I like Maestro's Charm. They're at a virtual 7 between Helix and Maestro's Charm, and we're at a virtual 16. It's not the worst. Um, I don't really feel like dumping any of these things. 1, 2, 3, 4... Be holding up Maestro's Charm or Helix. Actually, I wouldn't be able to hold up Helix because I only have one white source. I'm just going to pass. I think it's got to be hard for them to win from here. I'm going to do this twice and just... Go all out on Helix. <clears throat> um, we have two ways to hit him in the bin. Play with fire, so they're they're probably just dead. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it out. Graveyard, Helix, Dome. Play with Fire, Dome. Okay. I didn't want to slow roll. We're at 2-0 now. This deck plays slowly. I perhaps play it even more slowly than it needs to be. But that is a tip for the deck. That unless you're in danger of losing or in danger of... Having someone else's deck go over the top of yours, like if you're clearly the better long-term deck, I usually just don't want to take any chances whatsoever. This is a fine hand, especially on the play again. We've been, been getting lucky with the plays here. So it might be argued that these uh, tri-lands, cycling lands, are like better later in the game found that mostly what you want to do with this deck is just have more and better options as early as you can. So like the more and more diverse land base you can have the earlier in the game, probably the best to go for that. It's flying into the... No idea. Okay, we're playing against detectives, I'm assuming, here. Uh, which I'm, I'm really curious about. If things go well, we'll get to the end something and see this deck, which is pretty helpful, by the way. Knowing what you what matters and what doesn't matter with this deck, uh, it's pretty relevant. Okay, so I'm probably gonna. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I don't mind having helixes in the bin. We're probably gonna the end of this guy. Uh, and then figure out what we need after that. So, yeah, I'm just gonna shoot this dude. And so we're gonna pay the life and just do it right now. I just wanna, I wanna see what's going on here. We got lands we can dump to uh, big score. So we've got this dude. This that's a solid ass magic card. We've got this guy who I've never even played against before. And there's a battlefield service. Who you draw? Cards gains out. Life, uh, Private Eye. This is our uh, Lord. We got no more lies. This looks like kind of a janky deck and not even like a good one, if I'm being honest. But it might be decent against us. This dude is actually just super scary. Uh, they can't play it right now. Um, no more lies is great against. Actually, counter magic in general is good against us. So, yeah. Let's let's go get the rest of these dudes though, because these guys are kind of annoying. They uh, look, look what else they have here. So we got 
more Ezrim's Cryptic Coat. Man, what a saucy deck. Private Eyes, Case. All the cases. Mark Watch, all the... Okay. Alright, dude. I don't know if this deck is any good, but... I don't want to get no more lies. Just... You do? Okay. Yeah, all right. Um, look like I didn't do anything right now. I kind of want to just tap out all three or more detectives. So probably we're just going to fire up Restless Bivouac. Do we even have the mana to do that? Doesn't look like it. And I can't even get the mana this turn. That's annoying. So I guess uh, we can either play Rafine's Tower so we have the mana next turn, or we can play Restless Fence. I'm inclined to play Restless Fence because we have a lot of mana. Um, if they kind of tap out for something, we're going to big score regardless. Uh, okay, so there's dude. Um, do they just slam it? Okay, they don't just slam it. They're holding up no moral eyes. That is the right play for them. Uh, Restless Fence also, I believe, has Menace, which is convenient. And investigating is no annoying, too. So we can't cast any of No More Lies. That is annoying. Makes that guy a little bit too big for some of what we're trying to do. Um, not going to cycle Rafine's Tower, I don't think. I still like to have another white source for Bibwack. Play with fire, not helpful. I guess the only thing we can be thankful for so far in this game is that we're not close to being dead. Still holding out hope that they'll allow us to big score. Maybe I shouldn't have held out that hope. But, like, they're not casting Big Ugly Dude um, because we have mana up, I can only presume. So. No More Lies is really screwing with us. I guess I'm glad I know that they have it, but. Uh, I don't see this being especially useful. I think of what. I think I'd rather scry than, I don't know, if I, if I drew like, yeah, I don't, I don't want that. Okay, the gate is good because it'll let us beat no more lies. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna be pretty darn close to dead, but we can, We can now, assuming they don't play Ezrim, which would be annoying at this point, but I'm assuming they've been holding up, and if I'm them, I'm like, well, I don't really need to unless my opponent deals with these guys, and right now, I can't deal with these guys. I wish this was only able to be used as a sorcery. That's pretty gangster. Unfortunately, we're going to go to eight here. If I'm them, I probably do nothing. Yeah. So we're going to big score. Dumping the mountain. Having to get back up. So hopefully we eat this No More Lies. Oh man, I shouldn't even play that land. Because <laughs> now, now they can't No More Lies me. I'm going to cast it anyway. You know you want to do it. That base. Well... No more laws shouldn't be as hard to deal with now. I might, I might just go for the throat. This Alquist dude. And I wish I had some way to disrupt the ability, but I don't. In which case, as well. I wish Negate also dealt with an activated ability. Because this is a darn good activated ability. It's a, like Sphinx's Revelation or something like that. Era's past. Yeah, that, that's good. Uh, I don't even know if I have Alquist, but... Solid. So 
So unfortunately, there's not a lot. I like. I don't want to. I want to try to remove this guy. I need to deal with Ezrum. I feel like our chances here are poor under the circumstances. The rest is not the worst. Uh, let's start there. Crypto coat. The top card. Double Ezrim for Market Watch Phantom. Other Alquists. We're gonna get this. Just baiting them into stuff from, from this point is probably hard. Uh I'm not even sure how we get out of this if they cast Ezrim, and I can't imagine them doing anything else. Okay, I think we're right with that. This is getting tough, but how much else I can do here? Huh. We've got to start two for wanting them pretty hard. Um, so unfortunately. We're going to take this hit. Yeah. So we get calamity no matter what. We need we need to burn down the house. I don't think I have one. Burn down the house would kill this guy because these guys would also die. Um and I could cast invoke calamity now to go digging. Um I could dig with a maestro's charm. And I could the end something. The end plus not much good. Well, we're going to try it. <laughs> Alright, so is there anything I want to duress out of his hand? Not especially. Um, so we're probably going to Maestro's Charm. At the top five. One in hand. Probably go for the throw under these circumstances. Oh, oops, that was that was the second decision. Oh well. Um uh, I think we were dead in this game regardless, but I made a mistake. Yet again. So curiously, in this case, I think Sunset Revelry is the play. Brotherhood's end is not good enough. It can, Calamity is not bad. So we can gain life, make dudes draw a card, and we do still have enough red left to Calamity. We got another Calamity. Alright, deck is maybe bailing me out of being terrible. We still desperately need a uh, burn down the house, which we don't have yet. But as of right now, we're not dead. We have a counter spell in here. We do not. We need burn down the house. I don't really like big scoring, although maybe this negate isn't super helpful long term. Helix at the end would be nice if I could like actually helix away something, but their their dudes are too big. Another private eye.
No draw card, so dudes won't be able to be blocked. <clears throat> right, targeted to, so they can't be blocked. I don't I don't know why. Oh, okay, so they're targeting everybody. That guy, that guy, that guy. So they can't be blocked right now. Fortunately, we can do something about that. So we could the end one. We could... I guess that's all we have. We have to the end and then maybe Sunset Revelry. Since they're ever really coming off first, we'll give us dudes and a card and some life. Uh, I can't imagine getting too many more of these dudes, but we'll grab them. And our opponent will scoop it up. I don't know that they had lost there, but we were certainly getting to be in a better position. Uh, we're at 3 and 0. Oh. I think it's going to be a short stream for the day. 3 and 0 oh is a fine place to end. Um, so we'll take a glance at this deck as we wrap up. Four color Calamity. I do think that Invoke Calamity is a sleeper in standard. And I think we got a little bit lucky on some of those games. But this deck, uh, in my testing, in um, it was I was playing this at the end of last format. Or not last format, but last season. Um, and so it was all in ranked at the bottom of Mythic or the top of Diamond. So, like, not against Jank. And this deck was 6 and 2 prior to today. So it is now uh, 9 and 2. Certainly serviceable. Uh, I think that some of its victories result from our opponents have knowing, having no idea what's going on. But one thing I like about this deck, the style of deck, is that there's a lot of removal in standard, a lot of it doesn't go to the dome, um, and it's terrible against this deck. So there are a lot of dead cards in our opponent's hands against this deck. Uh, I think there are some decks that just go bigger and badder and there's practically nothing we can do. Um, we're going to play a Jeskai version that's a little bit more streamlined. But there's value in black for sure. Like the end has been strong. Um, Maestro's Charm is really good. I mean, it was the, it was the reason for this deck originally. Um, my first version had Meister's Charm and Pr Prismori Command. Ugh, that was so good. Um, go for the throat, cut down, duress. Like, none of them bad, particularly when you can, like, duress someone on their draw step uh, and burn down the house at instant speed. Some of that stuff's just pretty darn good. I don't know what I'd change about this deck yet. It's been, I don't know, winning a little bit too consistently for me to realize what's bad about it. Uh, I think some of that's luck. So I'm curious uh, if anyone watches this, has comments about what should be played here. The Jeskai version includes a single copy of Celestis. There's one one other permanent. Uh, obviously, with a little bit better white mana, uh, we could be playing uh, board wipes. We could be playing the five mana exile all your dudes, uh, create a token. Um, also curious about maybe a Wandering Emperor or something, even though it doesn't play into the theme. Beware of trying to build a version of this deck that doesn't go all in on Invoke Calamity. I even question in the Jeskai version, Zergo and Celestis as being two cards that don't play uh, with the theme. I know that sounds extreme, but this is an extreme sort of style, so do with it as you will. We're going to wrap up here at 3 and 0. Like, subscribe if you're into this sort of thing and uh we'll we'll see you next time probably with a Jeskai version of this.